Hey everybody, I'm Pete, and today we are checking out some serial LCDs. Uh, the three models we're talking about um, are actually an improvement upon an older serial LCD that we used to sell. We will continue to sell the pick based but these bad boys are actually AVR based. So that allows us to program over Arduino, which is very useful for updating firmware, potentially adding new features, or using this as your controller for your project, and then having a screen on it as well. Um, these also have a nice new upgrade in the fact that they talk serial, SPI, and I squared C. So you can choose any one of those three communication styles and you're controlling your screen. So let's take a closer look and see what we got on the back of this thing. Um, as you can see right over here, we've got the 328 AVR chip, which is what you find on the Redboard and many other Arduinos. So it has an Arduino compatible bootloader and you can actually upload a new sketch to that using the um, six pin serial line right here. It says uh, FTDI. Our um, serial basic FTDI is a good solution for that. Um, I do want to mention though that this actually has a very precise crystal that's pretty unique to this board. There are no other Arduinos that have this precise of a crystal actually. It is 11.0592. That's kind of a strange number, but it's very precise, and actually it's a cheap crystal that gives you a ton of precision. So that's why we chose that one. And so then it requires a specially compiled Arduino bootloader that you can um, now use Arduino to program. And you will have to use the SparkFun Arduino boards package. So you'll want to install that in your Arduino for uploading any new code. Uh, over here we've got our serial interface for uploading new code and that can be used actually to control the screen as well. So you could use an FTDI basic and just a COM port like TerraTerm or something and start sending it characters and immediately have something displaying on your screen. Um, all of the examples in the hookup guide actually use a red board and software serial to command the screen. Uh, the next section we have is SPI. So you've got your standard MOSI, MISO, S-Clock and chip select. And then we have an additional uh, set of headers for RX and TX, where potentially you could have this hardwired to your system, talking to a COM port, and then maybe you'd want to also wire it somewhere else uh, in your system. Uh, and then right here we have I squared C. Yes, the beloved I squared C. We can put this on a bus. Um, it has an address that you can change with a command, so we can put a bunch of these on a bus. You could have some sensors cruising off of that line too and then use this actually as your controller board for your project. Um, and then power, yes, power is an important part of all projects. I wanna mention that it has this 3.3 volt regulator and that guy is actually bringing down whatever raw voltage you put into the system. So we have some silk on here that recommends 3.3 to nine volts and that's a pretty safe range. If you operate within that range, you're very unlikely to damage this. If you have a system that needs to operate a little bit higher, like 10 volts or 11 volts, um, you most likely can get away with that, but this little V-Reg is gonna be working a bit harder to bring that voltage down, so um, beware of that. And the backlight is actually what pulls the most current. So if you're going to be operating at a higher voltage, then you wanna watch how much backlight you turn on and potentially use a little less. And you can always actually put your finger on this uh, to, well, maybe approach it slowly and see how hot it's getting. Uh, because the higher voltage you have, the more power it has to dissipate to get down to 3.3, and that's gonna be dissipated in heat. Cool, so that's pretty much all the lines. There's actually one more little set of headers here. Um, these guys are used for serial and power. So that's sort of the bare minimum you would need to control this board and it's in a JST three pin package, so that that's kind of handy. You could actually solder in a JST wire right on there and get into your system like that. So for the first example, we're gonna upload the very first basic serial example from the um, hookup guide. Once this is done uploading, um, you can see that your screen will say, hello world, and then below that is a counter that's uh, refreshing the screen and actually giving it a new value as the counter increments. The second example, um, also in the hookup guide, is how to control your backlight. And for this example, um, I'm actually showing red, green, blue um, at various settings. So the first setting, it'll show, it'll turn off all the backlights, and then it does red at 50%, 
and then red at 100%, and you can see that. And then it'll do green at 50%, green at 100%, blue at 50%, blue at 100%. And you can actually mix all three of these together to create any color you want. The next example is using a trim pot to change the contrast on the screens. And so this uh, example code and the wiring hookup is all in the hookup guide. Um, and as you can see, I can turn the trim pot a little bit and it'll actually send a new contrast setting to the screen. So we start out at zero, it's looking pretty good, and then I get higher and higher here and the contrast of the text starts to fade away. And as we get higher, it gets even lighter and lighter. And then once we're at above 100 or so, it just kind of disappears into the screen and that means that um, you can't see it and we need to go to a lower contrast. The other thing I want to mention is that temperature and voltage play into this setting. So once you get your setup going, um, it's a good idea to run this example and get your contrast set for your environment. Uh, an important thing to note here is that this screen has actually got its contrast controlled from software. So you have to send commands to do that. Our previous models had a trim pot on the back of the board that actually had some problems because it wouldn't hold position very well. Another important feature I wanted to show is the emergency reset. And so if you have your settings incorrect or you accidentally forgot what baud rate you're at, you can always do this and it'll restore everything to factory. Um, to do that, you first wire up your RX pin to ground. Um, and then you essentially just power cycle. So we're gonna disconnect our power to the screen and then we put it right back in. And then now you can see there's the flashy screen going back and forth. That means it's totally doing the uh, reset. And then it, now the screen reads power cycle me. So we have to do one more power cycle. But first we must remove the jumper. So we're gonna pull that out, the connection between RX and ground. And then we plug power back in and we're back to our factory settings. So that there is a few examples with the serial LCDs. I recommend hitting up the hookup guide. You can try out a bunch more features. Um, they're all laid out there with nice example code. Um, we at SparkFun are really excited to see these go live. Um, it took a lot of people and a lot of energy to make it happen. Our previous model with the PIC-based microcontroller was really difficult to upload new firmware and our tech support constantly heard from the community like, oh, this is a bit of a pain. And so we worked really hard to get it to an AVR and it has an Arduino compatible bootloader so you can just go ahead and upload new code whenever you want. You can even add new features too. So um, we look forward to everyone checking these out. And if you want to see more about them, hit up sparkfun.com. <laughs> Sparkfun? Yeah. Sparkfun. That's my story. I'm sticking to it, but I'll stray of communication. <laughs> One more time. Outro. Got it. Here we go.